Hey everyone, welcome back to EcarC. Today we're gonna to be building our Grasshopper 2. It's good to be back on the workbench. If you saw the unboxing, you know that we're gonna be building this pretty much as just a stock, other than different wheels and tires, some bearings, sport tune motor. So I'm excited for this kit. Uh, I have a few kits still that we need to build. This is one of them. And this is gonna bring me back to the 80s when I had my Hornet and my Subaru Brat. I think this is gonna be a lot of fun to build. And let's get this thing built. Okay, so now that we have everything unwrapped, I'm not gonna go step by step. I'll probably be fast forwarding through some of this. Looks like the first step is the gearbox, and then it looks like the servo, the electronics, mounting the gearbox, the rear gearbox, and doing the front suspension, front bumper, wheel tires, stickers. This is a very easy build. It does come with this instruction manual for the shocks, because this one comes with the oil dampers. And we'll probably do this in two parts. Maybe I'll do the chassis, then the body, or I'm not sure. Let me just show you something first though. See the difference between the Sport Tune motor, regular 540, and the little. I don't know why anybody would use this tiny little motor. Good old Tamiya gears. They're probably coming from the same molds as my old cars in the 80s. We are definitely not using these. Always have one of these handy. I'm going to just work it into the differential, spread the grease out, time for our Tamiya tools. Let me see if I can move the camera. So that should be a little better view. It shows you need a mounting plate here, but I believe that is only if you're using the 380. So it acts as like a spacer. But if you're not using the 380, as you can see, you need that spacer for the gears to mesh. So this will be a little bit further down the shaft. Okay, so now we're at the point where we have to put the motor in. Now, this motor is not going in this car. We're gonna use a sport tune motor. I thought about maybe a torque tuned also, but that will give a little more speed. So as you can see, this shaft is much thicker than this one. You cannot use this gear. So I have this 17 tooth pinion gear I'm gonna use. And I should be able to mount that right in. So I just need to see how I can line this up. Yeah, that should work just fine. You can tell right away if it'll work, how it feels. You just spin the motor. She feels good. 
Sounds good. I think we're good to go. So remember, if you're building one of these and you're upgrading, first of all, you need another pinion because it does not come with a different pinion. This pinion will not work. The shaft is too thin. Also, this is pressed on. So you do not need this mounting plate that acts as a spacer for this. You just go directly right onto the gearbox. So there's one thing I do miss. When I was younger, I used to listen to a lot of music while I would build, and YouTube does not allow us to have copyrighted music on these channels. So fortunately, I can no longer do that unless I mute this. But I'm not going to do that. You guys have any favorite memories from building RC cars? I remember in, I don't remember what year, summer of 80 something, I remember uh, building my frog. I had the Subaru Brat body for it too. I don't remember if it was a Subaru Brat or it was an actual frog, but I had both bodies. And what is that, the ORV, off-road vehicle, to me is ORV. Um, chassis and I would listen to Van Halen 5150 I would listen to it over and over and over again as I would work on my buggies and all right guys so we're gonna stop here at least we have the gearbox in the gears all greased up our sport tune motor in so I should have turned this the other way so we saw the label I could always flip it around we have our gearbox mounted to the chassis our antenna holder okay so we're gonna start building the shocks for our Grasshopper 2. So, originally the Grasshopper 2 does not come with oil shocks. You can tell in all the pictures, even on the box, it just shows the friction shocks. So what they do is you put a sticker on the box that says, you know, uh, CVA dampers included, and then they add this instruction sheet in there and they give you the oil dampers. Uh, they're just few basic to me oil dampers even though they include the little, you know, piston pieces with the different holes for different options, you can't do that because they give you the fixed ones that do not have that option, which honestly I don't like. I don't like to play around with different oils and, and uh, different configurations. I try to get it to work for me because everyone kind of drives different and has different terrain they drive on. And people just build them and don't drive them at all. I like to drive my buggy, so I try to make it uh, work for me as the best I can. So I'm just going to build these according to the instructions. And I'm, I'm sure you've seen many people build these CVs before. They have the fancy stand. I just kind of put them on here to let the bubbles um, rise up and then get rid of them. So 
I'll, you'll see me build them and then put them in my vise to just to rest for a little while. That's good, see? Just rest here. All right, everyone. Let's get started. I like to have um, a little cloth with me, with me for the oil. Let's get started. If you've never done this before, it's actually quite satisfying pushing the piston back up and watching the bubbles just pop. The last two I did hardly had any bubbles at all. This one's got quite a bit. I think I created a little extra by moving it up and down more. These will all go away. They're already almost all gone. So we're gonna give it some time and I'll be back to assemble them in about uh, like 20 minutes or so. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes, and we're just going to get right back to it. So I like to top off, just make sure the bubbles are gone, which looks like they are. I normally like to top these off, but I think there's plenty of them. So of course they color code them, so you know which one to use. They're one slightly smaller than the other, so we'll seal here. And these are going to make a mess. That's, um, part of the game. You just have yourself something handy to catch the oil. I don't have to go crazy tight. That's why they have the seals there. With the fronts, we're just going to put the shaft on, no space here. I just like to use pliers and this cloth. Hold the shaft so I don't ruin it. As I tighten this up. Simple as that. Feels good, nice and smooth. Feels pretty soft actually, might work pretty well with this. Okay, I'm just gonna build the rest.
All right, guys, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And we're going to finish this up in the next video because we're going to finish up the suspension. We're going to finish the front. And we're going to put some stickers on. Okay, thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.